Last week, someone asked me, David, how young is too young? So already, that's a very loaded question. But I'm going to do my best to answer it in the way that I see fit. So I would start off by saying that when we're talking about the question of age difference, we do so in the realm of dating or in terms of intimate contact because otherwise we wouldn't care or have any issue. It doesn't matter if you're friends with somebody 20 years apart, it's the thought of some sort of other ulterior motive that makes people worry for the safety of the younger person. Because there's this implication that the younger person can't take care of themselves. And it's even more implied when the younger person is a teenage helpless girl. The second part that I'd like to point out is that most times people don't care if you don't blatantly look like there's an age gap. So for instance, I'm 35, but I've been lucky enough to get the Asian gene, and I don't look 35. So for the last four years, I dated someone who was 10 years younger than me. No one said anything because they didn't notice an age discrepancy. But if I had aged a little bit faster and maybe started balding when I hit 28, I don't think so many people would have came up to us and said, hey, you guys are such a great couple. And that's just a little bit unfair, right? Because isn't that all just genetics? Do you fault someone for being short or ugly or, in this case, aging faster? My point is that I don't think the age number itself makes so much of a difference as does the eye test that people give. Which is why in a lot of cases, as you'll see in these idle critiques, you'll see them point out the one guy who's creepy looking or way too old for this. And I want to point out that that's kind of a prejudice, right? Because you see somebody a certain way and you automatically think they're untrustworthy. It has nothing to do with their character or their personality. It's just strictly based on how you see somebody. Now I want to point out, Asian countries tend to be a lot more lax when it comes to age difference. I have plenty of family members and friends who have family members that are 10 years apart and married. And it's totally fine. No one bats an eye. But I think in America, 10 years is a huge number for them for some reason. It always goes back to, oh, that means when they were born, you were whatever age. And for me to imagine y'all having sex at that time is disgusting. Which I don't know why that's where people's minds go. But the point I'm trying to make is that if you look at tendencies, women tend to find mates that are older than them. This is for a multitude of reasons. The main ones being financial situation and life experience. When a girl is 17, she doesn't want to date somebody else who's 17 because they act like they're 17. They don't know anything about the world, they don't have money to spend doing stuff, and quite honestly, they're probably not very good at socializing with girls. So one of the things I see in Japan, especially with Japanese males, is that they're allowed to hold on to that immaturity a lot longer. I mean, Japan is literally this playground for people to buy toys and figures and watch anime, go to amusement parks and cat cafes. It's incredibly encouraging to those things. And if you couple that with the incredible stress of the workplace that Japan is notorious for, I think it becomes very obvious why the age discrepancy thing is so common in Japan. Because I think the age discrepancy is more about timing in where people are in their lives. For example, in Japan, if you're a woman, you're supposed to be married by 30. So let's say if you're 25 and on, you're going to be a lot more focused on that goal. So if you're a guy and you're just looking to have fun, go out, be single and mingle, do you think you're going to come across a lot of single 28-year-olds who are willing to just date and not have some sort of implied commitment? No, and that's probably why they date younger girls, because somebody at 21 is probably going to be a lot more free and not thinking about those things yet. And also on the other side of the coin, when do you think it is that men become financially stable? It's probably like 25 and after. At this point, they've been out of college for a while, they've been working for a significant amount of time, maybe saved up some money, have gotten into the groove. And this is when you see them start spending money on things because they have the disposable income, they have the security. And it's the same with video games. You saw this increase in age of people who were playing games. It wasn't so much the kids anymore who every week had to go, mommy, mommy, can you please buy me a game? They didn't have money to spend on games. You saw the age go up because people who played games while they were young grew up and started having the money to buy games on their own and make their own decisions. And so the market started specifically targeting this group. And you can see the same in idols. Why is it that the audience tends to be older? Because kids in high school and in college who aren't working 
tend to not have the money to be involved all the time. Again, it's not because all the creepy old men are out looking for young girls. It's because the market has priced out certain audiences. They simply just can't afford the hobby. It's like with collecting cars. You're not going to see a lot of normal people going around collecting cars. It's mostly like movie stars or basketball players or some sort of other rich celebrity. But that doesn't mean there's a whole entire world of people who aren't interested in cars. It's just the nature of the beast. So is there an answer to this whole how young is too young question? Besides for what's required by law? No, I don't think so. You will always come across people who are more mature than their age gives off and some who are much less. And everybody is always a mix anyways. People are mature in certain situations and immature in others. So it takes a lot of work to figure out who's right for who. But I want to reiterate again that this whole age thing is still completely based on the thought that two people are in an intimate relationship. And that's in the real world. But do these rules hold true when it applies to the idol world? Which quite plainly is more of a fantasy world. A lot of the decisions that are made in Japanese law are based on the distinction that the real world and what goes on in your imagination are not the same. There's a huge distinction on how Americans view that versus how Japanese view that. But that's a subject that I don't think I'm prepared enough to talk about yet. So hopefully I'll be able to revisit it in a future episode. But for now, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.